Hi there, everyone. This is the first quarter moon reading. It's sort of like a check-in reading for the moon phase that started with the new moon on January 27th, 2017. I did a video for that new moon period as well. So if you want to know how um, the energy sort of start out for this phase, feel free to check out that video. Otherwise, um, the first quarter phase sort of speaks to the the impetus, the drive, the movement forward and the action upon the sort of realizations that we that we found during the new moon period. Okay. It's a period of higher energy, right? The new moon is just the very base line of the moon cycle. So it's very low energy. We're now moving into um, a heightening of energy levels, of drive, of passion, of vision, right? Of what we want to bring to fruition and culmination. Um, so it's a moment of increasing momentum, right? Of stamina, of, of focus on our creative intent, right? It's a moment of creation. It's the build up point. Okay. So I'm going to be doing the reading, a mini one for each one of the signs here. I will pull three cards unless I'm otherwise guided. <laughs> Sometimes the deck speaks an interesting language of its own. So I will um, follow that and, um, and provide a sort of uh, snapshot of the energies as you move forward along this stage in the moon cycle journey, all right? shuffle a bit more here. And we will start with Aquarius. Hi there Aquarius. Thanks for joining me here. Happy first quarter moon. see what we have in store for you. If you tuned in during the January 27th new moon reading, there was a sense of um, a transition period, right? From, from a place we knew, from, from a certain even thought pattern, right? perception of a situation and we, um, we we were preparing for the departure from that sort of world right. so that could have perhaps been the clarity of thought right that you would like to take action towards this new beginning that transforms your environment or your involvements in some way and let's see where that clarity has moved forward. Okay. You have the six of wands in reverse. You have the Hermit in reverse, in the very center. You have the Five of Swords on the right-hand side. So, Aquarius, what I'm getting. And as I was shuffling, um, you know, I had that same vision, right? That same vision of um, the waving, right? The waiting through the window, the waving goodbye that 
still that transition period, which makes me, which makes me think that the transition has not yet happened. The transition has not yet been acted upon. Um, some sort of change that you're hoping to make that you perhaps with, with mental clarity decided that you want to act on has not come to full form yet. It seems that there's a sense of waiting, still waiting. You're done, though, with the introspection of it, right? You seem rather solid within yourself in terms of how you want to move forward personally, right, intuitively. You have a, a certain resolve about that. But in terms of the actual awakening, the chrysalis, the, the flea, right, the transformation itself, I'm getting that, that the time has not yet come, okay? And on the right-hand side, you have, again, this Five of Swords, right? Which oftentimes speaks to, especially in this spread here, as I'm, as I'm sensing it, speaks to a few things. One, the conversations, the verbal banter, Right, that we um, that, that we experience with others, of, with those in our environment. Okay, uh, it, it could be difficult conversations, right, that we need to move through in order to um, enable this transformation to take place. Right, or it could be speaking to an internal need, right, um, to sort of um, cut through the emotional tape, right? The illusion of a boundary that's holding us back from making this jump, from taking this step, from transforming, from doing it, from doing it, from doing it, right? From, from thoughts, which are the swords, which are the air element, we, we move, right, into action, which is depicted by the wands, the action of transformation in your case. Okay, but it seems that you are stuck lingering in the thoughts phase, not the internal rumination of what do I want to do, but rather the thoughts and the intellect, the intellectualization of the, the decision that you're making, of the um, the 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 sense of needing to break through the final sort of boundary that's really, I'm sensing, not really a boundary, just just a perceived boundary, right? One that is, again, more internalized, right? On this swords card, if you take a look, you could see this sword in the very middle piercing straight through this worm, right? Speaking to almost a need to cut through something, right? If you sense, right, the, the, um, the vast dichotomy between sword energy and this worm, right? The worm doesn't really pose any sort of resistance, right? Upon the sword. The sword is, is much stronger, is, is much more, uh, it, it, you know, sharp. It's a more aggressive sort of symbol than the worm. But nonetheless, right, it, it can almost, this is exactly what I'm feeling. I'm getting the feeling of, of sort of the elephant that's afraid of the mouse, that sort of thing, right? So you may be having a fear or a phobia of some sort, about making this clear decision and this clear change, um, which is holding you back from actually making it. And this could be speaking to a sort of nostalgia, okay, um, that we spoke of, I believe, in your last reading. Okay, the, you know, tied along with the desire to change is this sense of um, sort of pending nostalgia that is attached to it. We're very much ready to make the change in, um, in the aspect that regards our personal growth, right? Our more internalized perception and perspective of the transformation and the process. However, however, in terms of 
the acting upon that decision, right? We are met with the resistance um, that I believe is self-imposed. Okay, that we just have to get through, that we just have to cut through, that we just have to face, right? That self-imposed boundary. Okay, I'm sensing that it has to perhaps do with childhood, perhaps has to do with a uh, sense of vulnerability, that has to do with uh, what we've known to be familiar, right? And charge forward with uh, a sense of... Um, independence, transformed personal character even, right? And direction of will. Okay, so thank you so much Aquarius for tuning in. I hope that helped you during this new moon. Um, not new moon, but kind of, right? All, all dots connect somehow. Um, but the first quarter period of the moon. So thank you so much again, Aquarius, for tuning in. I'll see you guys for the full moon on, I believe it's the 10th, the 10th of February. So stay tuned until then. And remember to check your rising or your ascendant sign. Um, sorry, your rising slash ascendant or moon sign, as those can actually be sometimes even more accurate than your sun sign. All right. If you don't know what those are, feel free to click the link below in the description box. Put in your information about your birth details and so on, and it will compute it for you. All right. Thank you so much, Aquarius. Enjoy February, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hi there, Pisces. Hope you guys are having a great February. What do we have in store for you, Pisces? Let's see how this journey is unfolding for you. Okay, it seemed that with the new moon, you really, you, you brought forward an inner resolve, an inner strength, surmounting, surmounting um, energy, will, drive, direction, focus focused, channeled energies, right? So there was a lot of clarity. There was a lot of vision with your path, it seems, which was beautiful during the new moon period, right? The clearer our path is, the, the more um, sort of sound the direction is that we want to take with something. Ah, oh, Pisces! Ace of Cups popped right out. Straight up and out, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. The renewal of emotions it seems that yes this change that you've made right is absolutely fulfilling to you emotionally and on so many levels it's a breath of fresh air you are revived you're you're reinvented you're redefined um you're breathing now right beautiful beautiful so it seems like you're riding this wave right the waxing period um, from the new moon to the full moon in which the first quarter moon is right in the middle speaks to the heightening, the increasing of energy, right? Riding that wave that's growing in intensity and energy, bringing us to the point of final culmination, which we see at the full moon, right? Or at least in some shape or form, um, a culmination of some sort. So it seems emotionally you're riding this wave, right? You're stepping into the sort of state of um, accepting this new beginning, right? Living this new beginning in, in so many ways is what I'm sensing, all right? You're feeling good, Pisces. You're feeling good. All right. Beautiful. Moving straight out with the fool. New beginning. The very first sort of um, step 
along our journey, right, that we take to this newfound um, um, discovery of who we are, who we want to be, right? And it's it's really the um, the realization that who we um, the person that we embark on this new journey to discover is really of our own making, right? Who we want to become is um, really of our sort of creation and vision, right? We are the alchemists. And so it seems you've taken that role. You've absolutely stepped into that role. Okay. Now you have the, you have two pentacles cards coming in. The two of pentacles in reverse, and you have the five of pentacles upright. Okay. So, and at the base of your deck, you have the nine of cups upright. So you have two cups cards, two pentacles cards, and a major arcana speaking to the very first step along this new journey for you. Okay. It seems that something is going to become concrete in terms of this new beginning. Okay. It seems that um, emotionally you've been ready, right? You've stepped into the emotional space of this new beginning. You're feeling the emotional renewal of it. And there is a lot of, um, I'm sensing that there's almost a preparation point, right? A, a, um, a sort of culmination of energy, right? Which is quite fitting for this period of time, right? Again, of the emotions that you're investing in this new beginning. And there is mystery attached to this process for you, right? There is an element of mystery, but I'm not sensing mystery in um, a negative way. I'm not sensing mystery in a deceiving way, right? Because generally the moon can speak to um, e either as the card itself or as a symbol on a card can speak to sometimes um, an element of of being in the dark, right? But I'm sensing that you're in command and you have a clarity, an oversight of this whole process. But there is a, um, a period of pending, a period of pending, right? Waiting to take action, um, and bring this process out into the open is what I'm feeling here, right? You're, you're waiting for the sun. And in a way, you don't know what that is going to sort of look like once it's out in the sun, once it's out in the, um, out in the real world, so to speak. I, I'm not sure why I'm compelled to say that, but there's a feeling of, surprise, right? You're, you're waiting to bring something that you've, you've been emotionally invested in that you are sort of hoping to reach a pinnacle with in terms of um, emotional satisfaction, even something that you've poured a great deal of creative energy into, one that you are guided by your intuition in. Absolutely. This is creativity melded with emotions, melded with our sense of intuition, right? This is a, a um, an intuitively guided creative process is what I'm getting. And it's building, it's building. And you're sort of waiting until this culminating point, right? To let it come out for everyone to see, to present, right? To see in actuality with greater clarity not just a dream, right? Not just in the dream state, right? And inherently, right? Whatever the, it will look like once it's out in the clarity, 
brings along with it inherently a sense of not knowing, right? How will this actually look, right? What will this actually be like? There's still a sense of hope, of optimism, of, of um, enchantment. There's so much enchantment with this card. So much. So much. With the moon on top of all of this creative energy, wow, that's creative, creative potential. Waiting to be um, um, put into an active state of manifestation. Look at this Ace of Wands right beneath all these three cards, right? The awaiting first step in action that's taken towards this situation. It's almost like a cascade, right? This needs to be taken. The first step needs to be taken. That will um, sort of domino effect the rest, right? Then everything will become clear sort of thing, okay? But you're waiting on the first step that needs to be taken. Emotionally, you're ready for it. You've stepped into it. And it seems that the very beginning of that journey is going to start as you move right out of this period. Now, um, which is beautiful for the full moon, right? It's beautiful. Now, at, at the center, in the very base, you have the Five of Pentacles. And on its left-hand side, you have the Two of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, so let me tap in here. One second here. So pentacles speak to security, speak to a sense of groundedness, speak to um, the sort of tangible world around us, right? What we contribute to on a daily basis that we hope will bring us a sense of satisfaction and um, security in the long term, okay? Now you have this two of pentacles and in reverse, right, upright, it speaks to the sort of um, balancing effect of our efforts, right? The um, harmony of the energy that we put out and what we bring in. And so... In reverse, it's still speaking to the harmony, the balance, the establishing of sort of order, right? In the very beginning stages of a process that we hope will bring us long-term stability, right? It's almost like the formation of a foundation of a process that will bring us stability. Could be of a business, could be of something that has to do with finances. But, right? This butterfly is not yet flying upwards, right? Action and flight and motion forward has not yet been taken in regards to this um, almost strategy. I'm getting strategy that was put into place. So it could be tied to this Ace of Wands, right? This sense of pending, waiting to take action on a strategy that we previously have been ruminating on for quite some time. Okay, the time has not yet come about to release the butterfly, so to speak, into the world.
it's interesting because, right, on this card we have the dichotomy, the interplay between a sense of flight, freedom, lightness, experimentation almost even, right? Dynamic, spontaneous feeling of the butterfly, contrasted with the pentacles, which are the slower moving energy, one that's down to the ground, right? One that grows in the ground, one that um, grows over time. So it's almost like the flight and the implementation in the real world of the strategy that you're laying has not yet occurred, okay? But it seems that it's one that you have placed a great deal of creative intent into, that you are waiting for that moment, the right moment to release. Okay, and at the very base, you have this five of pentacles. I'm getting this as there is a lot of efforts and energy that you're putting into this new beginning. I'm sensing as it regards to your finances or your career in some shape or form. It could be a new project that you're hoping to get off the ground. Um, and I'm sensing that the um, release of it in a tangible way, right, um, in a pronounced way, in a public way, is impending still. Perhaps in a way that you didn't quite expect, right? This is almost like, oh, oops, an exhausted feeling, right? Look at this um, rose. Sort of um, like, oh, right? So many labor hours, so to speak. So it's almost... Like, you're feeling like you have a lot of adrenaline, you have a lot of momentum, you want to get this thing going, you're, like, pushing this boulder up the mountain, but you're sweating, right? This is like a sweating flower. It's, like, the weirdest analogy, but that's the feeling I'm getting. A lot of work going into something. And it's just simply, right, at the base of, of this new beginning, of this new... Um, you know, emotional reju emotionally rejuvenating transition, right, is this incredible amount of work that's going into it. And one in which you are, you don't have a set sort of um, deadline of, of uh, sort of, when or how it will manifest officially. Okay, there's a little bit of mystery about that, but in tandem, in tandem with um, so much hope, so much eagerness, so much emotional satisfaction, right? Even in this new beginning in and of itself. So I'm sensing that you're not quite worried about this. It's almost expected, right? You're, it's almost like you expect it of the journey. You know that what goes into this, right, is a lot of work, is sort of waiting and waiting for the right time to release it. Okay, and I'm sensing that it almost brings you a sense of satisfaction, all of this work, this hard work. Okay, so thank you so much, Pisces. I hope that this reading was helpful for you guys. I will see you at the full moon on February 10th for another full moon reading. We'll see how this journey culminates for you guys. Um, again, feel free to follow your rising sign, moon sign, um, ascendant rising, same thing as well, as sometimes those will be even more accurate than your sun. I know I personally tend to resonate a lot with my moon sign, even more than my sun oftentimes. So um, if you don't know your rising or your moon sign, feel free to click the link in the description box below and enter your details and that will compute it for you. All right. Thank you guys so much again and have a wonderful February. Happy first quarter moon. Bye. Aries. Kumbaya. Don't know why that just came to mind, but it did. 
there's a letting go. There's a letting go. There's a coming to terms with something, Aries. I'm immediately getting that feeling. There is a free flow, a free flow. You're like, this is how I feel. This is what I'm doing. This is, this is, there's an inner resolve with you. You're, you're coming to terms with your truth in some shape or form, Aries, all right? And you're singing about it, right? Metaphorically or literally perhaps even. You are, um, you're celebrating it. You're celebrating this, this progress that you're making. Okay. Interesting, Aries. Interesting. Okay, beautiful. Two cards speaking to um, absolute clarity, absolute resolve, moving forward, um, 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 stepping into the light, stepping into our light, right? Our truth, right? You have three cards really that speak to the fire element. And this is beautiful because the fire element speaks to our inner resolve, to our sense of confidence, repose, passion, movement forward, action upon um, principles of truth, right? That hold true for us inside of uh, our, really our soul, right? It's sort of like the spark of life. The impetus, our creative drive. Okay. Now, I'm sensing, I'm sensing that this is absolutely a decision um, and transition that you've made, at least, right, energetically in your mind, in terms of your vision of where you want to go and the energy state that you want to move into and really the physical state that you want to move into even, right? surrounding surrounding this new beginning and the action taken right to step into the sun and 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 act and live and perform within the environment of the sun within greater clarity optimism truth right personal truth is at the very center sort of a um distraction of efforts and not even a distraction, but um, so, so many, many ways of going about embarking on this new journey, right? That it's like, it's almost like the thrill and the excitement. Yeah, yeah, I want to do this. Let's go. Oh, what do I wear? What do I do? Kind of like that feeling, right? Emo emotionally, yes. Energetically, in terms of your inner resolve, you're ready for this new beginning. You want to make this new beginning. But the means by which you do that, right, is somewhat hazy, is somewhat, um, um, there are dispersed sort of methods by which you can move forward and make this change a reality. Right, actually happen in the, the physical uh, world. So that could be, right, the inability to decide, sort of, there, there being so many elements, so many factors in play, at play, that it could be holding you back from making the full transition and transformation. I want to pull one more card for you guys. Okay, and at the bottom of the deck you have the Two of Pentacles in reverse. Speaking to Speaking to in your last reading, and I believe especially the new moon of January 27th, 2017 reading. you had a stark uh, 
um, sort of theme of, of establishing for yourself in your mind your perception of stability and groundedness. What makes you feel grounded? What makes you feel stable in a true way? Is it things? Is it circumstances? Is it thought patterns and behaviors? Or is it an inborn sense of stability and security? Okay, this card speaks to the strategy of that, right? The strategizing and the harmony of that. And actually, um, Pisces got this card, okay, as well. So there is sort of a phase of strategizing still, right? How to move forward, how to move forward and take action to accomplish what we now know we want to accomplish. We have the clarity of vision. It's just now the strategy and the implementation of efforts that we hope will bring us to that new world, right? That we're looking onwards towards. And it's in reverse. So it's a, there's a feeling of sort of pending energy, right? Waiting for um, the strategy to sort of stabilize and be in place before this butterfly can rise and fly. So thank you so much, Aries. I hope that this reading was helpful for you. Keep that vision strong. It's a wonderful time to, um, to, to really ruminate and, and, and um, visualize and focus on it during this waxing period. Energy is high and growing. So um, it'll be highly conducive, right, to your efforts, right? So keep your visions keep your meditations on sort of this new beginning that you want to bring about and clarity will come about I'm feeling with these various options right at hand okay so thank you so much again Aries have a wonderful February and feel free to check out your ascendant rising or moon sign if you don't know what those are you can click the link in the description box below enter in your details there and it will compute for you your different planets and signs all right so sometimes those will be even more accurate um, than your sun sign I know for me my moon is incredibly accurate oftentimes more so than my sun so um, yeah hope that's helpful for you guys and until then I will see you at the full moon on February 10th all right so we'll see how this process is kind of culminating all right Thanks so much again, Aries, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hi there, Taurus. Taurus, I'm getting this bike theme for you. Again, I'm feeling, I, did you have the bike theme last time? There's a bike theme here. Or maybe that was Libra. That was Libra. Nonetheless, I remember having a very um, strong physical an, an active sort of approach of energy state with you guys for your last reading. Okay, there's a lot, a lot of optimism. There's tremendous stamina that you have with whatever it is you're setting your mind to here. You're super focused on your goal and what you want to accomplish, what you want, the milestone that you want to reach, I'm feeling, right? Absolutely. And this is a great period of time to tap into that energy, right? To harness it, really, because it's the waxing period of the moon. So energy is slowly culminating, gradually intensifying to the point of ultimate energetic expression, right? The full moon is, is the peak of that energetic expression. Highest intensity, highest level of energy. Okay, so we're building to that point right now. So it's it's wonderful, right, that you are keeping the pace, holding the momentum, sustaining your efforts and your movement forward on this journey. Okay, so let's pull some cards for you, Taurus. We're almost ready here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh my God. I'm going to pull another one for you guys. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
Taurus, you got three major arcana. That is significant. You got temperance. You got the magician. You got the lovers in reverse. You got the nine of pentacles. You are absolutely reaching this nearing um, culmination of whatever it is that you're working towards. I'm sensing a project. I'm sensing finances. I'm sensing a career point of some sort. Something. You have your eye on it. Oh my God, you have your eye on it. You have temperance. Speaking to patience, faith, sustenance, right? Sustaining the fire in a way that is um, um, a allows for endurance, right? Along the journey. Temperance is looking right over at the magician. Oh, beautiful. The base of your reading, Taurus. You're beaming. You are stable. Foundation. The direction you're going in. You are... Um, really harnessing and manifesting all of the tools in your toolbox, so to speak, to bring about the culmination of this. Ooh, you are intensely focused, intensely. Temperance is looking right over the magician, which is looking right over at the Nine of Pentacles. Look at this, surmounting energy. You are riding this wave during the waxing moon period, Taurus. You are really making um, making good use of this of this energy. Okay, that's going to sort of peak at the full moon period, most likely. Okay, so to speak. Now you have the lovers in reverse at the very top of the reading. Okay, which I'm sensing. Okay, it speaks to pending, waiting, waiting for flight, waiting for departure with perhaps someone or something or a situation that emotionally satisfies you. Okay, but you're waiting. All eyes are on the culmination of this, perhaps getting the finances in order in order to um, uh, liberate this situation or um, manifest the situation or enable greater freedom, travel, I'm getting travel as well, right? There's a need to complete some sort of situation, bring a certain situation to completion and culmination in order to um, move forward along the journey, okay? That will bring you ultimate satisfaction. Sorry about that, Taurus. Okay, so absolutely okay this freedom and sort of escape right the the um the play after the work sort of feeling will come upon the fruition and the culmination of uh what seems to regard your career your finances the closing out of a phase a period or reaching some sort of pinnacle a milestone in terms of any one of those things okay Okay, I want to pull one more card for you guys, okay? Wow, beautiful. Okay. The Father of Cups. Okay. Speaking to the Lover's card right? The lovers speaks also to Gemini. But if you look at these two cards together, right? I mean, it of course speaks to emotional satisfaction, to the water element, right? Which is the ultimate depiction with the father of cups. Okay. It's the highest form of expression of the water energy, right? It goes ace to 10. Then after the 10, it goes into the archetypes of water, right? Which is the actual, um, uh, manifestation and embodiment of the water element in a way that uh, regards us in our being, right? So it goes daughter, son, mother, father. So this is the absolute pinnacle of expressed water energy. So it seems, right, that you have your focus so greatly on a task that you're hoping to complete, okay, which is not atypical of the Taurus archetype, right, as we know, earth sign, very focused, very determined, very patient to achieve goals. 
And it seems, right, that you are waiting to accomplish this, to, to bring about um, perhaps financial stability, groundedness, in order to be able to step into the more emotionally nurturing, satisfying realm, okay? Um, as both of these two cards at the very top speak to flight, right? So the tapping into emotions, greater freedom, whereas below you have a great focus on building this foundation before you can fly up and out and on. Okay, so thank you so much, Taurus, for tuning in. I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. Build that momentum as you move through this waxing period of the moon. Um, the moon's energy is absolutely on your side during this period of time for that. We will be culminating at the full moon. Um, so let's see how this process sort of culminates for you. We'll come forward with a reading on February 10th for the full moon. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Um, as always, remember to check out your ascendant, rising, or moon sign. As sometimes those can be even more accurate than your sun, or at least provide some further insight. All right. If you don't know what those are, feel free to click the link below in the description box. Um, just input your details on that website link and it'll compute for you your rising and your moon and other planets as well. All right. Thanks so much, Taurus. Have a beautiful February and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey there, Gemini. I'm getting the same writing theme that I got in the February reading, in the general February reading for the beginning of January, of, of February. Same, thinking, writing, right? Staying up at night with a pen and paper, glasses on, ooh, wanting to write something thinking about what words you want to choose, right? How, how to say it, how to present it, how to... Um, but there's, again, a quietness, a solitude to that. Okay, a contemplation, a contemplative energy, absolutely. Um, which is not too atypical of the Gemini archetype, but Gemini is usually more outspoken. So I'm sensing that you're in a period of thinking before you act, thinking before you speak about something, really analyzing a situation. I'm hearing verbal banter. Okay, verbal banter. Here we go. I'm gonna pull one more for you guys, all right? Okay, I'm sensing that in the past, there was a dream, perhaps there still is a dream, okay, this feeling of, of, oh, what if, right, that what if feeling, wishing, hoping for something to come about, but it not quite happening, okay, this speaks to a singular sort of dream, right, something that you set your sight on, right, you look up into the sky and you see the stars, right, and you... You, you wish upon a star, right? Major Arcana card. Speaking to significant personal transformation, speaking to uh, something that, that, that regards us on a very deep level, right? It's not really day in, day out energy. So this is something that has been sort of um, ruminating, existing, manifesting uh, over time, it seems. Okay, and one that affects your being on on a deep level okay so there was a certain sense of um hop optimism or hope that you wanted to have about the situation okay but that didn't quite fully manifest okay now you move into the sun of wands which moves into and looks over at the sun of cups in reverse and at the very pinnacle, at the very top, 
of the spread, you have the world. What a beautiful card to have reigning over all of these other energies, right? The world reminds us to broaden our perspective, right? To, to um, uh, look at things, right? To zoom out rather than zoom in, right? And um, uh, expand the horizons of, of sort of our thoughts and how we see things and our expectations and even what we want or what we hope for, right? What we thought we wanted, what we thought was a dream and a hope and didn't manifest, right? Perhaps is because, right, there's a world of possibilities awaiting us ahead. So it's just a reorientation, I'm feeling, of perspective, of perception of a situation, okay? I mean, both of these cards are beautiful. The star, the world, okay? They're quite similar. But the world is just even more expansive in a way. It's more expansive. The world is the world, sort of like the universe, right? It's, it's, there are no boundaries, right? A star is singular. It's it's a it's a very um, focused sort of wish or desire or expectation or dream. Whereas the world is boundless, right? The mind is completely open with the world. Okay, so there's an opening of the mind to the world. Okay, I'm sensing sort of letting go of this situation that didn't quite work out, and moving into the Sun of Wands at the very base, right? which is looking over at the Sun of Cups in reverse, I'm sensing that there perhaps is someone, there is a few options, there is someone who can be a sort of um, emotionally uncommunicative type of person. It could be a male. Who... Um, who just is not performing as you are expecting in some shape or form, not speaking the emotional truth to you in some shape or form, okay? There's, um, and it's mirroring the star. Look at these two cards, right? On either side, bracketing the reading. I'm sensing that this hope, or sorry, oops, this hope or this dream that you had perhaps in regards to this individual who is not um, acting in the way, right, that you had wished or hoped for, can be a highly creative individual, highly creative individual, one with a lot of potential, one with a lot of emotions that are not yet tapped into, one that is not fully in touch with their own emotions even quite yet, right? I'm sensing immature, immature. Right? You are now, you are now taking this, the perspective in the stand of, of, I am no longer going to ruminate and remain focused on this sort of um, situation that didn't work out, right? You can be left hanging upside down, not communicating, not talking, but I am going to rise and take action forward with my true hopes and dreams, with pursuing the world. No longer this dream, this wish at, that at one point I had hoped for and it didn't come about, didn't manifest, right? I'm now looking up onto brighter, um, upon brighter sort of pastures. And I'm the master of my domain in a way, right? In terms of that. Right? You're coming forward very ardently, it seems, with the Son of Wands. Look, the Son of Wands is right at the base of the world. Almost like rising up, lighting up into the world. Looking over at this reversed Sun of Cups. Right? So, there's a sense of looking over at someone and like raising up with a balloon up into the sky like, bye! That sort of thing. Okay? Coming with me or not? If you're coming, great. If you're not, sayonara t type of feeling. Okay, so long. Yeah, I mean, you, the stance you're taking is of independence. 
is of sort of even maturity. If you look at these two cards together, right? The sign of cups is sort of timid, is sort of shy. It's sort of like the emotional um, uh, artist, right? The shy artist who hasn't even yet stepped into his or her real creative potential, hasn't tapped into it yet, right? The colors are sort of like markers within this chalice that are just bustling, bursting with creative potential and energy, but they haven't been used, right? It's almost like still a blank canvas. There's no color on this card. So it's untapped potential. Now the set of wands though, by contrast, is more of a confident figure, is more of an enterprising figure, is more of um, um, uh, 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 high vitality in the sense of, um, not really high vitality, but uh, um, very pursuant of what they want to accomplish and they're going to go after it in a very active way, right? Whereas the Sun of Cups is a little bit passive, right? Water being more of a yin energy. The Sun of, of sorry, of Wands rises, fire rises, fire energy grows, right? Whereas water is stagnant, lower to the ground still, okay? So I'm sensing that with the sort of stagnancy of this situation, and the downward pull of energy, you're rising. You're rising above the situation and into the world, really pursuing the world and your desires and your dreams as it relates to your personal creativity, right? Redefining your dreams and your goals, absolutely, okay? And this is a beautiful energy to harbor during this period of the waxing moon, right? Because the energy is intensifying, it's growing, and that's great greatly in line with this fire energy that seems to be surmounting, okay? And the Sun of Wands and the Sun of Cups are somewhat similar. They're both suns, but they're not quite meeting eye to eye, okay? So there's a difference in perhaps maturity level. There's a difference in perspective. There's something that is um, not quite aligned or right in terms of the level that both of these individuals are on and from which they're operating, okay? So thank you so much, Gemini, for tuning in. I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. Um, feel free to check your ascendant, rising, or moon sign. Um, oftentimes those can be even more accurate than your sun sign. I know I tend to resonate a lot with my moon sign. So if you don't know what those signs are for you, you can click the link below in the description box and enter in your details and it will compute for you. You are rising and your moon sign. All right. So thank you so, so much, Gemini. And um, I hope to see you guys soon. I will actually be back with your February 10th full moon reading. Um, so that we'll kind of see how this whole process culminates and is brought to fruition for you, all right? So thank you so much again for tuning in, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Gemini. Okay, we are moving on to Cancer. Hi there, Cancer. This card wants to come out. You guys are having a great February. Wow. Okie dokie. Interesting. Um, Interesting because Taurus got temperance in the magician, both. Okay, got both of those cards in their 
in their first quarter moon reading. So if you know a Taurus, if your rising sign is a Taurus, if you know a Taurus archetype of a person, if you have your moon in Taurus, you may want to check that one out. Um, perhaps there are some threads um, that run together there, okay? Now, um, you're coming out with two major arcana, Temperance and the Magician, significant, both looking onwards and forward to the future. Um, the theme of your reading is the Hierophant in reverse and justice beneath that, okay? So this is a pivotal um, turning point for you, pivotal turning point for you. Okay, and you actually, this is quite fascinating, you got the Hierophant in your uh, mid-February reading. Okay, so be sure to check that video out as well. Um, yes, let's get right to it here. You have two Swords cards, the Nine of Swords and the Father of Swords lying at the very base of your reading. Okay, the foundation. Um, and I'm sensing a strong swords theme in general, which also did come through in your mid-February reading. When you look at the magician here, right, the sword on this card is quite prominent. I'm, I'm, it's popping out to me, especially in light of these other cards and the energy of the reading. So be beneath the high the hierophant, you have the justice card, which also has a sword on it down the very center. Speaking to decision, speaking to clarity, speaking to our sense of discernment and judgment in terms of a certain situation at hand, okay? So I'm sensing that there is a situation that you have been ruminating on that has occupied your, your um, mental faculties almost over time. Okay, lots of thoughts going into this process uh, of some sorts, okay? Um, or situation, okay? Almost an over analysis. But it seems you have tightened your grasp. You have... Um, resurfaced from this previously sort of burdensome analytical situation with greater clarity. Okay, you're coming forward, you're looking at the situation head on now with greater clarity, whereas perception here is skewed, right? There's chaos, thoughts everywhere, right? Haphazard sort of thinking to clear thinking. This is the pinnacle, the very um, highest expression of error um, energy. Okay, it's the, the, the father. So, and it's at the very base. Okay, so this is a very stable earth, uh, sorry, air energy. Okay, you're, you are now looking at something very clearly, very clearly, which explains justice, which explains justice being right there. Okay. Okay, so you are making a decision about something, and you're going to be very clear on that decision. You are going to, uh, or you're going to need to be very clear with that decision, right? It seems you're in the process of, of analyzing a situation, examining something, perhaps even from afar in silence, um, relying on your on your sort of calculation of the situation in a very mature, wise way rather than letting the thoughts take you over, you are now in control of the thoughts and what you want to do with the situation that pertains to those thoughts. Okay. Um, yes, there's discernment happening. Now, it seems that there is a period of pending. You have the higher font in reverse at the very top of this uh, deck here, actually rather at the bottom, um, which is the sort of theme of the reading, and it's overlaid on top of the Justice card, speaking to that decision. So the Hierophant is the sort of wise counsel, right? The Hierophant is the uh, wisest card in the deck. It speaks to our inner knowing, having the key, the answer, um, 
to whatever it is we are ruminating on. It's sort of the clarity amidst the chaos and confusion. So it seems that you're perhaps in a period of needing to wait on maybe someone to give you information, maybe counsel. This could be a legal situation that is being referred to perhaps. Um, but with temperance at the very top, this is speaking to the need to um, hold your ground and wait. Fan the fire, but look over at sort of, this is like all eyes on either this individual or your own coming to terms with, uh, you know, your inner resolve about the situation, okay? Which, which could be a process that's not yet culminated, okay? you might not have absolute clarity quite yet in terms of how you intuitively feel about the situation and how you intuitively want to make a decision about the situation. But if it's, if it's a person, right, you have temperance looking straight over at the Hierophant like that, actually. Okay, so it's almost like a pending feeling, right? Temperance, speaking to waiting, speaking to faith, right? Um, waiting for the Hierophant to turn right side up, okay, and provide that knowledge, that um, necessary knowledge. There's a lot of focus here, especially with the Father of Swords as well, right, looking head on, right, waiting, focused, um, very in tune. I'm sensing intellectually you're in tune for this, you're ready, but there is, some, you're waiting on a piece to the puzzle, that's what I'm thinking, and it is the key okay, to the situation, to making the decision and moving forward. It's almost like I need to know this in order to make this decision, okay? It seems like that. The magician is in your um, final sort of outcome position as you move into the future. And in fact, the magician is looking out into the future, okay, in this direction. So the magician, right, is a beautiful card. It speaks to the sort of um, the harnessing of all of our elements, of all of our faculties in a way that's harmonious, right, in a way that's um, um, laced with faith, right, and, and confidence and, and intuition of knowing of our purpose and our passion and our path forward. So it seems that you are eager and looking forward to move in a new direction to have a sense of renewal and revival, even as it refers to your personal identity in the situation, okay? So whatever this decision is, whatever the situation is, it seems that you are ready to move forward, and it seems that whatever the situation is, whatever the decision is that will be made, will speak to you on a very personal level that, um, that, that, that will sort of almost unlock, unleash and enable this rebirth, okay, of who you are and your personal independence and your sense of vitality, creation, uh, creative, creativity and creation. I mean, that is alchemy, right? The magician is the alchemist. Um, and really your, your personal identity, right? who you see yourself as, who you want to be, the vision of the future that you want to create, right? Getting really creative and open-minded about that, okay? So it seems that there is some pending energy, right? You're, you're, you're needing to wait on something in order to make a decision, in order for the movement to happen. Faith and persistence is needed in order to, um, to reach that final culminating point. Um, but you're very much it seems ready on many fronts to make the transition and make the change, okay? You're eager about that. And that's beautiful energy to have. Temperance is a beautiful card to come through during the waxing period of the moon where the energy is growing, right? And this is a fire card, right? This peacock is fanning the fire, waiting, allowing the fire to grow in a healthy, sustained way. Um, that doesn't go wild out of control, okay? So it seems you're balanced, you're waiting, you know, just waiting for this one piece of sort of information or even um, um, uh, sort of inner resolve to come through and materialize before you can make the concrete steps forward and have this sort of realization and rebirth of some sort along your journey. Right. So thank you so much, Cancer, for tuning in. I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. Um, we'll see how this process sort of culminates at the full moon. I'll be doing a reading on February 10th for that. 
And um, yeah, so stay tuned for that video. Um, in addition, if you don't know your rising, ascendant, or moon sign, um, feel free to check out the link below in the description box, enter your information, and it will output your sign for, for both those plants and points. Um, oftentimes, people will tend to resonate just as much, if not more, with their moon or the rising sign, so it might be worth taking a look and checking to see if that provides any further insight. All right, thank you so much, Cancer, and I'll see you in February later on this month. Bye. Hi there, Leo. Hope you guys are having a great month here. I'm hearing something about doctor. I'm hearing something perhaps about examination. I'm, thinking, I'm hearing something about waiting with that, maybe. Oops, that wanted to come out. Okay, Ace of Wands in reverse. Lots of signs are getting the Aces here, and especially the Ace of Wands. Few signs have been getting them in reverse, um, getting it in reverse rather, the Ace of Wands. I know Aries got the Ace of Wands in reverse, so you may want to check that video out if you believe it does pertain to you in some shape or form. Okay. Yes, there's a pending energy. There's a pending energy with you here, Leo, okay? It's almost like you're holding your breath about something. Um, you're waiting for something to come through. It is mentally um, uh, sort of consuming you. You're thinking a lot about it, it seems, staying up at night thinking about it. Um, you have, let's see here, you have two swords cards. Um, just Sorry about that, Leo, okay. You have two swords cards. You have the nine of swords as your theme, overlaying the magician. So I'm sensing that your freedom and your transformation from this process and renewing a sense of confidence, I'm sensing has to do with, um, with eliminating this burdensome thought process or means of thinking about the situation, right? Perhaps. It's just over analytical, it seems. At the base of the reading, you have the Seven of Swords, right? Speaking to kind of the holding of breath, okay? Not having all the answers in a way even, okay? There being some sort of confusion, conflicting answers. Um, there's a stagnancy with this, right? Not full communication quite yet. Okay, now, and that is the base of sort of this reversed Ace of Wands. You are waiting for this renewal of, of action to take forward in regards to something. You want this new beginning of the magician. You want to set forth on this sort of rebirth, okay? You want to um, renew, right? You want a renewed sense of vitality, it seems, and this new beginning to charge forward in some sort of aspect of your life. But... It's the waiting on something, some answer or, or sifting through the opinions of others or communication with others, not speaking the full truth about something that needs to be resolved before you can actually move forward with this new beginning that will redefine who you are in some shape or form, it seems, okay? Um, on the left-hand side, you have the Three of Wands in reverse. On the right-hand side, you have the High Priestess in reverse. So, three of wands speaking to the ace of wands, right? It's an upstep like this. Three of wands speaks to a sort of portal energy, right? If you look at the card itself, it looks very much like a portal, right? The opening of the mind, right? So it's almost like the vision, the, the vision of the future, right? Looking into the future, but, you know, approaching it 
in our mind, preparing for it, maybe even in our mind, but not quite entering that space yet. Okay. And I believe, right, that it has to do with this new beginning that you're hoping to take the first step on towards. It's impending. It's impending. You haven't entered it yet because you are waiting on some sort of communication of something, either from you to others or others to you. Okay, it's the clarification even of, of maybe what you want to do or how you want to handle the situation. Or maybe it just requires a lot of um, communication to resolve the issue. Moving into the high priestess in the future position, moving forward into the future here, you have a very intuitive energy, but in reverse, right? So um, this could be speaking to the sort of need to tap more into your, intu your intuitive sort of guidance of the situation, right? You see a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy mental analysis sort of energy here. But it's almost like the advice, right? is to take on this more intuitive approach about it, right? But you may be feeling a little bit out of tune and touch with your intuition, how you feel about the situation. But maybe because of this heavy overlaid analytical thought process that's not allowing that energy to flow through, right? It could be sort of um, pulling this energy back, okay? But nonetheless, it seems that you have the vision for kind of where you want to move to. You have the, um, you know, sort of vision of who you want to transform into, right, beyond and past this situation. And you have, um, again, the vision, right, of, even if it's latent, a latent desire to start something, to move in a new direction, to rise above a situation, <clears throat> excuse me, that left you otherwise confused, entangled, um, stagnant, right? Unsure, just chaos, a lot of chaos, chaotic communication, disorganization, right, of thoughts, having to sift through that situation, um, nonetheless, underlying that sort of face of the, of the situation is vision, okay, and that's beautiful, right, so we have this waiting out energy mixed with this fire energy, with, which is really what the period from the new moon to even the full moon with the first quarter moon dead center, right, in the middle of those two periods really represents, right? You have the impetus of the thought, the nucleus of the idea of what you want to start. And then the fire comes in, the fire energy comes in that builds all of the um, <clears throat> sort of backbone energy that propels that idea into actualization and fruition, okay? So it's the interplay between air and fire, thought, theory, abstract vision with actualization, manifestation, um, tangible efforts, right, that are made towards bringing that idea, bringing that vision into fruition, right? So you have this energy waiting, right? But nonetheless, building and you're keeping your sights on it. So it seems this is a great time for you, Leo, to keep focused on your vision, okay? Roll with the punches. Move through the energy that you need to move through, even if it requires you to be patient in some shape or form. But nonetheless, right, hold fast to this vision of where eventually you want to go, okay? And um, we'll see how this culminates for you at the full moon period. I'll be doing a February 10th full moon video um, to kind of get a feel for the energies and how they manifest and are brought to a sort of culminating point um, at that period of the moon cycle, all right? So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, um, feel free to check out your rising or ascendant or moon sign, rising, ascendant, same sort of thing. Um, 
If you don't know what those are, you can click the link below that I provide in the description box um, and just input your information and it'll tell you your signs for either one of those planets and points. Those might provide you with some further insight into your situation. All right, so thank you so much, Leo. Have a great February and I'll see you on the 10th. Bye. Hi there. Virgo. Virgo, I sense that you are in a stage of review of something. I see you with a lot of documents. I see you looking carefully and closely at something. Um, being very scrupulous, 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 right? Looking at the painstaking detail in something. Nonetheless, a period of review. Of something. Okay. 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 So, Virgo. What's interesting here? is that you have two cards speaking to transformation mirroring each other, okay? The sort of chrysalis effect. However, the need to um, wait, right? The need for intuitive guidance and knowing before stepping into this sort of portal energy that speaks to a new beginning, an action taken forward in some shape or form, okay? If we get right into it here, you have the Six of Wands. This came up, I believe, for Aquarius, okay? For this first quarter moon phase. Now, the Six of Wands speaks to transformation, okay? Speaks to the rising up from a previous situation in which we were perhaps entangled, involved heavily, that we're now rising up from and transforming into a new situation or stage of a process, okay? Butterfly theme. Look at this card. And look at this card. These two cards are sort of bracketing the spread here, okay? One speaks to the transformation in and of itself, Another speaks to, it's the, it's the eight, the eight of swords, speaking to the sort of pending, pending anticipation of a transformation. Okay, it's, it's depicting this um, butterfly that's in its cocoon, right? Not yet ready to be released and to rise above and fly. Um, this can be this can be a legal situation. This can be a legal situation. Um, feeling as if you have to um, combat certain people, conversations. Um, viewpoints, right, before you can move forward from the situation. If you look at this card, right, the chrysalis, the, the cocoon is sort of hanging from this sword, and it's surrounded by these swords, okay? Inherently, this butterfly will be released, will rise above the situation in due time, when the time is right. However, for the time being, in this moment, the, the butterfly, or the to-be butterfly, is sort of at the mercy of the situation, right? Is very heavily involved, enmeshed in the situation, is dependent on the situation itself, right? Is required to remain in the situation until a final say is had. That's what I'm feeling. There's some sort of verdict 
Um, and there's a lot of uh, uh, energy that's culminating, rising to the sort of finality of this situation that we see here with the Nine of Wands, which is right next to following the Six of Wands. Okay, look at these two cards together. There's very much a culminating energy, right? The wands are being laid in a very strategic fashion. <laughs> Excuse me. Kind of like that, though, right? <laughs> the crescendo. Okay, the sudden, achoo, aha, got it. Everything is clear now. Okay, there's a lot of, there are a lot of actions being taken towards the, um, the culmination and fruition of whatever this process is. Okay, I'm sensing that um, there is an element of mystery to it, right? Not knowing sort of um, what exactly this, this boiling point is leading to. However, in, in some shape or form, it's understood that whatever does um, um, manifest from it will liberate you in some shape or form, even if it just means liberating you from the process itself, right, in and of itself. Now, the High Priestess is the thematic card for your spread here, and it's looking over at the spread. Look at this card. Major Arcana. Speaking to a very significant um, transformative sort of um, perspective that we take on as we move forward in our journey, the High Priestess is the most intuitive part of the deck. It speaks to a sort of um, yes contemplation, but one that is grounded, firm secure and and confident rather confident in its knowingness of the universe right even if there are mysteries which inherently there are right um not having the answers look at the darkness on this card look at the moon oftentimes referring to alluding to a sense of mystery of not knowing technically the answers right but knowing intuitively the sense of groundedness is rather intuitive right so i'm sensing that there is need it's needed for you to take on a perspective and I sense that you are, right, you are sort of being guided through this process by way of your intuition and your inner knowing. And that will ultimately lead you, right, it's really the intuitive perception of the situation and perspective, long-term perspective, right, of what the situation is ultimately the world it's taking you into, which is this Three of Swords, right beneath the High Priestess. Okay, so I'm getting that you're looking very far into the future of this situation, whatever this is. You're looking into the future, you're, you're um, keeping your sights on what it will bring in the long term. Okay, momentarily you need to exist within the situation as it is until the right time comes about that you can complete the cycle, close it out, right? And rise above it and transform into the next stage. Okay, which is a beautiful energy to have, okay? During this um, waxing moon period, right? Waxing meaning the energy is, is rising, kind of like a crescendo, right? So there's very much a buildup of energy, and that's very conducive to, it seems, the, the surmounting uh, uh, attention that's being um, laid on whatever this process is. Okay, patience, it seems, needs to be had. You're at the mercy of, of a cycle that, that will close itself out um, in due course in its own natural sort of divine timing, so to speak, even. Um, 
and I think that you're really flowing with that, right? You're flowing with that. You're not resisting it. You're flowing it. You understand intuitively what it's going to be bringing you in the long term. You understand intuitively that it is a process that requires a certain um, level of, of uh, even finesse, right? Even finesse, right? This is almost like the need to be diplomatic, the need to handle a situation that is otherwise difficult in such a way where you are maintaining your own sense of groundedness within yourself, right? Not being overtaken by the opinions of others, not being overruled by the system, by the situation, um, right? M maintaining your own persona even within this process. And one that is that is tied to your foresight of where you're going in the future. Okay, so it's it's this building up feeling, right? Knowing that the time will be coming, um, and we'll see how this manifests as time goes on into the full moon period, which is going to be on February 10th. So I'll be doing a um, February 10th full moon reading as well, so you can get a sense of how these energies are sort of culminating and moving through this moon cycle. Um, that will be the peak of highest energy in this cycle for this month, so stay tuned for that if you'd like to kind of get a feel for it. Um, otherwise, I would highly recommend checking out your ascendant, rising, or moon sign, as sometimes those will tend to resonate with us, if not just as much as our sign, even more, okay? So it could provide some further insight into the situation, perhaps. Um, if you don't know your ascendant, rising, or moon sign, you can click the link below in the description box, input your information, your birth details, and things like that, and it will output it for you, and that might be another way to sort of get a better sense of the situation at hand, all right? So thank you so much, Virgo. I'll see you on February 10th, and um, enjoy the rest of your February here, all right? Bye. Take a quick sip, all right? Hi, Libra. How are you guys doing? It's good to see you. Energetically. <laughs> and in your comments. I appreciate them very much. So thank you for that. For your collaboration. Which is not surprising given that you guys are the sign of diplomacy and balance, right? Very cooperative energy that you guys have, oftentimes. All right, so let's see what's in here for you at this beautiful first quarter moon period. Right, so we are in the waxing period, in the waxing phase, as the energy um, derived from this new moon planting phase rises up to the eventual full moon, which will be the highest peak and output of energy. Okay, so this is really a period of, um, of building that momentum, as mentioned in the beginning of this video, and um, really holding fast to our vision keeping our eye on the prize sort of uh, motivation and feeling, okay? So I'm gonna shuffle it just a bit more. Ooh. <laughs> and out they popped. Okie dokie, we have <clears throat> four cards here. The Son of Swords in reverse, the Ace of Swords in reverse, the Daughter of Cups in reverse, the Daughter of Swords upright. Very, very interesting, Libra. You have one, two, three, three Swords cards, significant Swords cards. You have the Ace, and then you have the Daughter and the Son. So you have two sort of um, archetypal um, 
embodiments, right? Very sort of wise manifestations of the air energy present. And you also have the ace, which is the very first um, expression of the air element, right? The fresh, the new, the new direction, the newfound clarity, right? Um, clarity of thought, clarity of reason, clarity of path, strategy. It's a very strategic energy and one that really beckons a fresh breath of air. Now, you have it in reverse. You also have the Son of Swords in reverse. Son of Swords speaking really to action, right? The desire to move forward with a strategy. Um, and I'm thinking into this new beginning, okay? Whatever this may be. It's a desire, though, I'm sensing for, for, Yes, but this is an undercurrent energy, Libra. This is an undercurrent energy. You're not yet able to flip these two cards right side up and actually act on it in a very um, outward fashion, in a very public fashion, right? This is preemptive energy. You're, you're feeling that you are ready to do this, you want to do this, you're eager to do this, but it's uh, not quite the time, okay? It's not quite the time. We'll get more to this, but... That's immediately what I'm picking up from these two cards in the very beginning. Now, you also have the Daughter of Cups in reverse with the Daughter of Swords. Very interesting because you have a son and an ace, and then you have a daughter and a daughter. So two daughters towards the tail end of this reading here. Um, the Daughter of Cups speaking to sort of the, the first foray into a creative, more emotionally satisfying, nurturing um introspective journey, okay? And one that really speaks to your personal sense of emotional satisfaction. It's a very personal embodiment of, of the water energy, right? Look at this. It's the archetype, right? Much alike what I explained here previously with the son and the daughter, right? Being archetypes of the energy, embodiments that are beyond just the ace to the 10, right? Of any element. It's really when we have experienced the ace to the 10, um, really involving other people, that we then graduate in a way to um, this sort of wiser, higher octave, of harnessing that energy within ourselves, right? We take on that energy. So it seems that you are hoping to step into a re, a period of redefining a new journey, okay, as it regards your emotional satisfaction, a, a journey that is creative and personal to you, and speaks to you on a level that you haven't really tapped into into the past, in the past, as well as one that redefines the way that you use your intellectual mental faculties, right? You're eager for this new beginning. You're eager. And I'm sensing that, see, these first three cards came in reverse. So look at these cards together. So I'm sensing that they are associated with one another and with this new beginning. The Ace of Swords being the very center, being the stand that we take to pursue, to strategize, to idealize this new beginning, right? It all starts with that, um, that impetus of an idea, okay? Which Libra, being an air sign, is very much down your alley, right? There's um, much um, analytical power and prowess to your, uh, to, to, to your, to your being really, right? But I'm sensing that it's, it's a redefinition of how you use that mental energy, that creative energy. I feel that you are going, 
<clears throat> to channel this this mental energy in a way that now speaks to your emotionalism, your uh, more nurturing side, your creative side, right? One that speaks to you personally, personally. Emotions are very personal, right? Water, cups, very emotional. They're more internal, right? It's um, how we feel. It's, it's really an expression that comes from the inside out. And it's housed in a place that's deep, right? Water is heavy energy. It's low. It lies low to the ground. It's still. It's quiet. But it can be deep. It could be vast, kind of like the ocean. So, I'm sensing that perhaps previously there there was an overemphasis on... Um, <clears throat> I'm sensing that you are quite well versed in the realm of communication within your intellectual faculties, but you now want to redirect it in a way that is channeled towards a creative pursuit and outlet, okay? Yes. So I think you are thinking of, uh, you're considering using your your um, <clears throat> your air energy with your water energy in tandem in a way that they cooperate. Okay, so there's some, I'm sensing there's some sort of project or something that you're hoping to begin. You're eager to do it. You want to fly right into it and start. But you have to wait on something. Now, you have this daughter of, uh, sorry, daughter of swords. But this card is rather colorful even, right? Which does kind of speak to this Daughter of Cups. Look at the stars in the background of this card, right? There's a sort of um, softness to this Swords card. Whereas generally Sword cards are rather um, sharp, are, are um, cunning, are, are direct brash even, right? Look at this Son of Swords. There's no messing around with this guy, right? He's he's swooping in a direct line of vision um, to, to pursue what he wants to pursue. But the Daughter of Swords is more um, pensive, more observant, more introspective even, right? It's a, it, it speaks, I believe, to the subtlety, the softness, the nurturing aspect, the wise manifestation of the air energy, as we see in the Daughter of Cups. Okay, so now the Daughter of Swords is standing perched on the sword, which is pointing into the direction of the future. I want to pull another card for you guys, all right? Okay. You have the Two of Cups in reverse. So you have two Cups cards in reverse, Libra, okay? And I'm viewing it as right atop this Daughter of Swords. So, upright, the Two of Cups speaks to um, emotional satisfaction, fulfillment, but in a way that is temporal, uh, in a way that is not like the satisfaction, the emotional satisfaction that we derive from within ourselves, right? It's just a two. It's almost the feeling of the thrill of, an, of a first date kind of thing, right? It's not like true, inborn, emotional satisfaction and stability. It's a temporary feeling, right? It's an excitement, it's an impulse even. It's even sort of like a foreshadowing. 
is what I'm feeling. And it's in reverse, which I'm sensing is mirroring the reversed energies that we're seeing off in this corner here of, of the, um, of the new beginning impending, right? So you have Daughter of Cups, Two of Cups, both in reverse. I'm sensing that, Libra, you might be thinking this situation may, may regard you and another person, perhaps someone, um, a spouse or a partner or someone, right, that you feel close to, that you feel compatible with in some shape or form, with whom you are hoping to, by way of this new beginning, establish a newfound and rediscovered, redefined sense of emotional satisfaction and bliss in such a way that that really um, is not just the sort of superficialness of the Two of Cups, but rather a result of this much deeper new beginning that speaks to you, the core of your being, right? That speaks to you. It's this very personal journey that, that you're embarking on, right? It's the Daughter of Cups. So I'm sensing that once this situation begins to flow forward and turn right side up, it may um, reinvent maybe even your perception of um, of this relationship, if it's a relationship. It may redefine the way that you even achieve emotional stability and satisfaction in this relationship, in this situation, in such a way where you are really taking a taking on the role of of um, a more creative individual. So I'm sensing really, Libra, that you are you are transforming to become the sort of uh, the sole provider almost of your emotional satisfaction, right? This card really speaks to dependence even, right? Being excited, being happy, being eager because we're going on this date, because of this other person. It's not because we've found this new direction that we want to move in that's emotionally satisfying to us right? It's not because of our um, inborn emotional stability with, within who we are, right? Within our purpose, within our path. This is speaking to a sort of um, superficiality, right? A materialism almost even upon which this satisfaction, emotional satisfaction is dependent. So I'm sensing that in a way, replacing this perception, or even this situation, or this past situation, or this future situation, is your personal freedom, your, um, your, your, your personal identity. I, I'm sensing this is really speaking to who you are and your individual purpose and identity, how you see yourself in the world, who you want to see yourself as, what you want to become, what you want to create, things like that, right? I'm sensing that you're going from a viewpoint of um, perhaps previous focus on this sort of emotional satisfaction to wait a second, let me really think about within the context of who I am and within the context of my life and my journey, what do I want to pursue that's going to bring me a true long-standing personal sense of gratif gratification and emotional satisfaction and stability. Okay, and beneath this 
two of cups, we have this daughter of swords upright, right? And the daughter of swords, again, speaks almost to a sort of lone ranger energy, okay? But one that is enchanting, one that is um, unlooking, okay? The star card in this deck has very similar coloring and illustration on it, okay? These sort of uh, inklings of light, these little stars, speak to um, our hopes, our dreams, right? The application of the sword energy, of our ideas and our visions, in such a way that, that really um, liberates our creative freedom, right? That really speaks to our hopes and our dreams that are connected not to an external situation or belief system or person, right, or circumstance, but rather to our personal journey, right, one that's very personal to us, not one that is not conditional or dependent on someone else or something else um, or another belief system, right? It's what we really want to achieve and bring forward. And we act upon that based on our intuition, based on our inner emotions and what we are sort of guided towards based on who we are, right? If that makes sense. So I'm sensing that the Daughter of Swords is a very independent energy in some ways. Right? And it doesn't even necessarily mean the upturning of a relationship or a situation like that. It just perhaps can mean that your perception of yourself within the context of that situation, right? You're no longer looking at it as like, this is my emotional satisfaction. This is the be all end all. This is what it's all about. Now you're looking more as like, wait a second, it's about my journey. It's about, um, you know, my, my creative potential, right? About what I want to create right, in this life, my path, my purpose, right, and the fusion, really, of the air and the water energy, the hopes and the dreams and the strategy and the ideas, right, the vision um, that's derived from a place that's very real to us, very deep to us, okay, Libra, so thank you so much for tuning in, as always, um, I will be coming in with a February 10th full moon reading for you guys to get a sense of how these energies will be culminating uh, through the moon cycle. So that will be the peak of a of, uh, sort of energetic output and the time when it's kind of considered that everything comes to a point of culmination in some shape or form. Okay, so real clarity is had at that moment in time. So if you want to tune into that video, feel free to join me February 10th, right? Um, aside from that, feel free to check out your Ascendant, Rising, or Moon sign. If you don't know those uh, signs in your own birth chart, you can click the link below that I provide in the description box and put your kind of like birthday, birth time, information like that, and it will have an output of you for your signs. All right? So sometimes those will actually be more accurate, if not just as accurate as your sun sign, so it could perhaps provide some additional insight as to your situation. All right. Thank you so much again, Libra. It's a pleasure reading for you guys yet again, and I look forward to seeing you on the 10th. All right. Bye. Hi there, Scorpio. How's it going, Scorp? I sense that you're putting things in order almost like a period of preparation, like looking through, and I think it's this speaks to a theme that we visited in January, or was it February? Nonetheless, you definitely had a similar energy coming through in February, as I do remember. Okay, this, this feeling of um, preparing, uh, revisiting, right, sort of opening a box that was otherwise neglected for a period of time. This one wants to come out, I'm going to pull it out, 
Okay. So, right, I'm sensing that there are a lot of details that to the work that you um, need to sift through, look through, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of make final says, final determinations, and set aside. You're, you're clearing house in some shape or form, is what I'm feeling, okay? For the preparation of something, a decision, a move, maybe even, here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, Scorpio. And the lights just went out. That is rather curious. The universe has its ways of communicating, right? And that was one of them. <laughs> so the Eight of Wands here, this is the card of sudden um, sort of um, kind of like that, like the light, it's like sudden. It's like a flash of, of light on, off, right? Turning the lights on almost. Um, if you look at this card, if you can look at this card in the dark as much as you can, and this is kind of creepy in the dark, but maybe not because you guys are Scorpio. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. All right. Um, eight of Wands, right? It's all darkness on this card, except for the point at which this lightning bolt zaps the center of these neatly arrayed wands, okay? It's almost like the lights are going to suddenly turn on, suddenly. An event, a moment, a flash of insight, clarity, I mean, a shakeup of some sort seems, it seems, is going to be had. Let's see if we can get a little light on us here because this has a real campfire vibe to it, which is cool, but I want you to see the cards, so. Okay. Okay. All right, um, so, as I was saying, right, some sort of event shake up within your environment, within, I'm thinking procedure, process, um, uh, steps forward, right? Something is going to change. Okay, and I want to look further into the cards to get a sense for what it regards here. Okay, okay, Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio. That is your energy. Metaphysical masters you are, right? Lots of very strong metaphysical energy that Scorpio has. So. I want to pull one more. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Scorpio. Let me tune in here. There we go, okay. Okay, Scorpio, right off the bat, I'm sensing that this has to do with a situation that regards um, um, either something that emotionally speaks to you or specifically, more specifically, a situation regarding love. Okay. You have the lovers here in reverse, right next to the Five of Cups. Okay. Both cards speaking to emotion, um, the rumination, right, of 
what was in the past, of perhaps what we lost in terms of something that spoke to us emotionally, right? There's, there's an air of nostalgia to this card, the Five of Cups. Okay. Okay. So, Scorpio, you have one Pentacles card at the top of your spread. In reverse, it's the Eight, the Eight of Pentacles. At the base of the reading here, you have, again, the Eight of Wands. Interesting. You have an Eight and an Eight. Then you have the Five in the center at the base of Cups. And then at the very far right, you have the Lovers in Reverse. I then pulled an extra card for you, and that is the Six of Swords. Okay. This is way too much light now. So let's just, okay. The Six of Swords. Your theme card is the Eight of Swords, overlaying the Seven of Swords in reverse, overlaying the Ten of Swords in reverse, overlaying the hanged man. And I will go one step further because I feel this is telling a story. The seven of wands. My God, Scorpio, this is really interesting here. Okay. We're really, this is telling a story very clearly below that. You have the 10 of wands and below that you have the 10 of cups. Okay. Lots going on here, Scorpio. Lots. So. Let me digest. Scorpio, I'm sensing that at the base, the root of all of this is an, I almost said eternal, but I mean, that could just be speaking to a long term rumination and focus on a matter um, regarding love or the emotional realm, right? That did not pan out as you expected. Okay. This can also speak to a sense of regret, a sense of loss yet again, right? Um, thinking on the past, right? What went wrong? Why did it happen like this sort of thinking? And if it's not love, it could just simply be um, speaking to a, a period, right? Or, or a um, situation rather that once emotionally satisfied us or we thought would emotionally satisfy us, right? But didn't. So I'm sensing that at the core, at the core of this, this projection of energy here in this process is um, the reminder, the remembrance, right? The, um, the stillness of thought of that thought that you are not quite uh, moving on from that you're not letting go of, right? However, at the top of the spread, at the very top, you have this eight, eight of pentacles in reverse. Okay. The eight of pentacles generally speaks to sort of the workaholic persona. Okay. 
the intense focus on our task at hand, our, our long-term goals. Um, it's day in, day out energy, but one that is interwoven into the fabric of our long-term vision of what we are reaping, right? If you look at this card, it's depicted by a spider spinning its web. So intensely focused on what is right before him, right? Knowing though that this web is growing and that he's contributing to something that will bring immense stability in the long term. Okay, it's, he's surrounded by four pentacles and pentacles speak again, right, to the earth element, speak to our sense of groundedness, stability, but one that is tied to our tangible goods, so to speak, the tangible world around us, our finances, our career, right? This is almost like a, what's really interesting is that you have this, this stark dichotomy between very soft, almost vulnerable, lonely, stagnant, emotional energy, and this very active, pursuant, driven, focused, busy, busy-minded, almost distracting sort of energy, right? Look at these two cards together. What do you guys think, what is your impression of these two cards? What do they make you feel? Right? When you look at this card and then you look at this card, right? what is the feeling that you get with these two energies? Are they, um, do they work in unison? Do they work in harmony? Are they, um, are they coordinating with one, with one another? Because right? these are, I'm saying that these are two sort of, see, this is on the top. This is almost like the surface. Whereas this is the base. This is the bottom. This is the root. This is the underpinning, the undercurrent of the situation, right? But this is a lighter energy, right? Water is heavy to begin with. Pentacles are heavy too, right? So you have heavy on top of heavy. Water's really heavy, right? It sinks, it, it seeps into the earth and down. So, I'm sensing that there's almost been sort of, um, right, in your subconscious, in your subconscious, you, you are, are burdened almost with the memory, with the nostalgia, with the rumination, right, of whatever this past situation was that went awry. And in a way, you have covered that up with or, or substituted dealing with this directly with the intense focus on a completely different area of your life. Just a total like 180 diversion of focus, okay, on, on something completely different. So where we're feeling deep inside, right, emotionally unstable and out of sorts, we are seeking physical, tangible, material stability. Okay, almost like the overcompensation effect, right? But what's so interesting, Scorpio, about this is that this spider, when it's in reverse, as it is on this card, is looking straight down at this Five of Cups. I'm sensing you want to drop it. I'm sensing you want to drop it. You want to drop the situation, but but 
but but there's something that needs to be transformed about the situation. You can't quite let it go, hence why it's 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 subsisting, right? For so long it seems. There's a heavy there's a heaviness. So when you look at these two cards together, let's look at them again, right? With with the spider looking down at this horse, this five of cups, this situation. It's almost as if even in light of this reorientation of focus and efforts and energy, right? And concentrated efforts is the subconscious, right? And maybe not even subconscious, but actual, like, you, you still can't get this off your mind, right? With a spider looking down. It's almost like even though you are trying to forget on the surface in a way and achieve a different form of stability to override whatever the situation is, perhaps even temporarily, you can't, right? You, you still see it, you think about it subconsciously or consciously, um, any direction that you turn. Okay, so there's an element of perception as well here. Now, you have another eight, right? So the eight of pentacles and the eight of wands. This was the very first card that popped out. Actually, no. I believe it was the eight of pentacles that I pulled first, and then it was the eight of wands. So let's go in that order. If we're looking at this as a sort of overcompensation of efforts, in lieu of handling, right, the deeper recesses of our subconscious and that which speaks to our emotions and our sense of emotional satisfaction and stability is this sudden, sudden, either self-inflicted or um, otherwise imposed shakeup of this situation, I believe, right? Eight, eight. Both of these cards speak to centrality, right? A theme of circularity, almost tunnel vision, almost um, almost monotony even. But one that is like getting stale, I'm feeling. A stale sort of monotony, right? This is like super monotonous. Highly strategized, predictable, right? It's like day in, day out energy, the same thing. This, ener this energy here too, save this lightning bolt, is kind of the same, depicting a situation where our efforts day in, day out, right, are rather predictable and expected. It's, it speaks to a pattern of behavior, right, wands being actions, behavior, um, efforts, passion, motivation, drive. And they're aligned in a very predictable, strategic manner, right? Wands are usually, fire is actually rather unpredictable, right? Fire is unwielding. Fire is, um, oftentimes uncontrollable, right? Passion, creativity, zest, vitality is not to be sort of contained and concise in its, uh, in its distribution, right? It's spontaneous. It's dynamic. So what we see here is sort of by way of this sort of overcompensation, overfocus on a regimented strategic form of completion and, and um, getting by almost with the time and achieving a sense of groundedness and stability that relates to tangibility, we have sort of the... Uh, 
the, the paralleled sort of staleness and predictability of our actions day in and day out. Our passion for what we're doing maybe it has become sort of um, routine in such a way that does not speak to our true fire, to our true sense of creativity. And it can leave you rather depleted, perhaps even, okay? But with the lightning bolt, it's like an, 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 an inevitable shakeup will occur that will set this otherwise stagnant, routine, um, sort of pattern of doing things into... Um, a new form. And this can be a realization, this can be a, an event, this can be an insight, but remember what I said, right, with the turning on the lights, which was such a theme here, just at the beginning of your reading, right? The lights flickering, turning on and off. It's like, I think once and for all, right, there needs to be this sort of shake up to the situation. The end to this having your head stuck in the sand, just, you know, like. Overbearing, overbearing earth energy. With fire that has been uh, subdued in its expression rather than. Than, than full of life, right, and creativity. So, you then have the Six of Swords, which is the second Swords card that pops out here for you, at sort of the very center, on top of all the cards, and I'll get to the lovers in reverse, but I wanna get to the Six of Swords first. The Six of Swords speaks to sort of the letting go of a, of a situation upon which we ruminated heavily and saying, okay, instead of looking down and remaining in the situation in which I was involved, I'm going to look up instead. I'm going to look up at the hope, at the possibility, right, as depicted by the rainbow. I'm going to walk away from this pile of swords that don't really lead me to where I want to go in the true sense, as perhaps it regards this Five of Cups situation. And I'm going to change my perception, right? Instead of looking down, I'm going to look up. Instead of being in the dark, I'm going to turn the lights on. Instead of ignoring, right, and, and stowing away, I'm going to bring out into the light, okay? So I'm sensing that this is something that needs to be done that will help liberate you from this situation that I feel you are deeply entrenched in that has ruled over a part of your life in such a way where you might not even be able to tap into this situation and energy because you are so boxed in by the heaviness of this Eight of Pentacles and therefore the sort of expectation that follows of your actions that need to match this responsibility that you've taken on, if that makes sense, okay? So, a change up of actions, a change up of even perhaps what you consider to bring you stability, the re-examination of those things with the hope, right? of what the situation can 
transform into rather than what it has been in the past, which is really this energy, right? And so it's interesting because you have stagnant energy and then you have energy that rises up. And then you have energy that's very circular, cyclical even, which is also a form of stagnancy it can be considered, right? Even though the spider is moving in a circle, he's still just moving in a circle, right? So it's predictable. So it's in a way stagnant, but it's also moving, which is sort of the illusion or the trap of this situation, right? Feeling that stability in this form will give us freedom from maybe this situation, even though I think deep inside you know that it won't. But then realizing that it just further, right, holds us down and suppresses the expression of this energy that needs to come out in order for you to rise above this old situation into a space, a mental space of strategizing how to move forward positively that is approaching the situation actively, right? Rather than taking a passive role. So considering that, right? You also have this lover in reverse card, which, which speaks to the element of flight yet again, right? If you look at the card, there are two doves and they're flying together quite blissfully. And I'm sensing that there's an alignment of, of theme here with these two doves and this rainbow. Okay, so I'm sensing that you need to rise above old situations, old ways of doing things, old paradigms of thought, old um, habits, patterns, right? And ways of strategically handling that whole situation. Old conversations, old thoughts, right? About whatever the situation is to rise above and turn this right side up. Right? Because this energy is reversed right now. So I'm feeling that un until you let go of this heavy energy from the past and this current energy that you're entrenched in, until you do that, right, these two doves cannot fly because these two doves are cageless. They um, belong in the air, right? flying through this rainbow, right? They have no place here amongst these swords. They have no place in this darkness. So weird, weird stuff, Scorpio is happening. That's pretty weird. Did you guys hear that? All right. Um, Right? So, I mean, <sighs> yeah, you have to rise above it. You have to rise above it. Because these doves cannot fly. It's almost like, look, these two doves are looking into the direction of this five of cups. And this eight of wands. Which is overlaid by this pending sort of energy of the rising up from the six of swords. So, the, the lovers, right, the doves, are looking, are like looking over at this whole situation. Almost like revisiting 
this old situation, right? Look at this. They're flying sort of right through this Five of Cups, which is, I believe, speaking to a past situation, and into this, right? Like, this is what's needed to reroute them and turn around and make their full cycle and circle, okay? Until then, they're going to keep flying in the reverse in this direction. Once they're able to break through this past, can they fly forward and reroute off into the future? Okay, does that make sense? Now, your theme card is the Eight of Swords. And looking at this card, there is a theme absolutely of transformation and of flight and yet of stagnancy, of, of remaining sort of at the mercy of a situation in which, again, you are entrenched, perhaps, right? Feeling vulnerable, under attack, feeling like you need to remain in this situation even though it's uncomfortable, but knowing that one day you will rise above it and fly away, and you will transform. You will be living your truth. Right? You will grow. Um, speaking to the flight and the rising above of the situation with the Six of Swords, as well as the lovers flying above into the atmosphere. So I'm sensing that this is impending. This transformation is impending. It's like the chrysalis, right? So you're waiting. You're waiting. And you may be feeling unsettled a bit about this transformation. Maybe not wanting to come out fully with it. There might be a form of resistance. But nonetheless, right? It's sort of like the birth. You can't stop the birth. The birth is going to happen. Even if you're scared, it's going to happen, right? One way or another, the butterfly is going to, um, to transform, and it's going to fly. So in a way, it's almost like none of these swords really matter. It's, again, a matter of our perception, right? The butterfly doesn't even really know that the swords are there. Right, but it's us looking at this card as an onlooker that we think, oh my god, it's so scary, right? All these swords pointing and engaging this butterfly or this, this, um, this cocoon. So I'm sensing that it's a matter of your perception of the situation. And it's almost like what you're fearing about the situation or how you're seeing yourself in the situation. You feel really vulnerable about this transformation of some sorts or this coming out about something. Um... And that could be the hindering sort of roadblock as you, as you transform, or it could just simply be that the time is not right, that you have to wait, that you're, that you're subjected to the natural process itself, right? As the cocoon very much speaks to. Now, beneath this eight of swords, you have the seven of swords, and you have the Nine of Swords, right? Now this turned into a long reading, huh, Scorpio? This is, this is intense. This is a big transformation I'm feeling for you, okay? This is something deeply rooted that's coming up that is, like, boiling, surmounting energy, okay? Which is a great time to, um, to, to sort of encourage the energy, right, to move forward and through and to flow, given that it's the waxing period of the moon, right, energy is an upward swing in motion, right, getting ready to um, meet the release point of the full moon, okay, so, nonetheless, right, the seven of swords speaking to kind of, um, and, and it's in reverse, so it's speaking to a need to release 
our truth in some shape or form to speak our truth in regards to this situation, perhaps. One in which we may feel vulnerable, one in which we may fear um, the response of others, right? The reaction of others. It's one that, right, you've dedicated a lot of thought to, a lot of thought to, Scorpio. Um, one that has really kind of almost skewed your perception. So much thinking, right? Almost is more ineffective. Right? More thoughts don't necessarily make things clearer, as you can see on this card. So, and beneath that, right, it's a hanged man. It's almost like thoughts, 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 holding in of thoughts, holding in of transformation, of process, not moving forward with something, not releasing something, just letting the energy of the thoughts build, the air energy build, then waiting, 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 maybe needing to wait, right? Again, naturally, it's interesting because there is a sense of being subjected to a situation in which you must undergo the natural process. And I believe you got the very similar theme for your new moon reading, January 27th, 2017. So check that out if you haven't. However, there's a dichotomy, right? Between feeling like you can't break free and you want to break free, you can't release and you want to release, and not being able to because it's simply not the right time. I'm something that this is fused. There's a fusion between between feeling like in control of it, but out of control of it, like feeling like you want to be in control of it, but you can't. And then feeling like you, um, like you can't, not because you can't, but because you actually must wait. Because the timing is not right. Okay, so there are a few um, factors I feel that are at play here, almost like a divine sort of divine timing. I'm getting divine timing, okay? And beneath this hanged man is the card that speaks to the rekindling, the desire to rekindle something, okay? To wake up from this darkness, light the match, start the spark yet again, achieve clarity, right? See what happened amidst this um, situation within which maybe we weren't so clear of what happened. Dropping the past. This is a 10. This is culminating energy. This is heavy, heavy energy. This is heavy wands energy, Scorpio. It's the culmination of past actions. It's the closing out of that phase. It's the dropping it. And moving into the dropping of, um, or rather not the dropping, because we have this upright, but it can be considered dropping, right, of our emotions, setting our emotions on the table, la allowing all of our pent up, built up emotions to release, right, this ten of cups, letting the colors really shine through, okay, um, and speaking the truth about a matter that regards perhaps this situation, right, that regards um, the whole situation, rather, right, even of, of our, um, of the way we handled the situation, too, okay? So thank you so much, Scorpio, for tuning in. That was rather long-winded, but I felt it was quite necessary to address. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. Um, I would recommend also perhaps tuning into your Ascendant, Rising, or Moon sign, as sometimes those signs can be even more accurate for us than our sun. I know that I tend to resonate actually much more with my moon. So um, feel free to check those signs out as well. If you don't know what those are, I have a link in the description box below. Click that, enter your details, and it will compute your signs for you. All right. I'll be back with a February 10th uh, full moon reading to see how these energies sort of culminate within the um, grander sort of um, macro moon cycle itself. So feel free to tune in then and um, I'll see you guys soon. Have an excellent February, Scorpio. Bye. All right, we are moving on to
we are moving on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, I think you feel proud about yourself for something, which I wouldn't be surprised of given that you've been on a roll, Sag, on a roll in terms of your personal development, your um, transformation, right? Your, um, the dedication that you have seemed to have, right? At least in these past readings to rising above uh, the difficulty of a situation, seeing through it in such a way um, that you're able to to uh, derive strength from that situation rather than, than, um, than, than it sort of override you, okay? So, I see you walking up steps, walking up steps, Sag. You are climbing a ladder, climbing a ladder. This one wants to come out. Oh yeah, mother of wands. Mother of wands, you're ready to birth. You're ready to birth something. It doesn't have to be a physical birth. Like, an, like, I mean, an actual birth. It could just be the birth of, of, a, of a project, of an idea, of a concept, of a anything. Of a new path, of a new decision. These three want to come out. Ooh, lovely, Scorpio. Uh, not Scorpio. But that could be relevant to some of you. Okay, that slippage likely could have had um, a deeper meaning there. So, beautiful, right? Portal energy, three of wands, right? Moving into a new existence, one that is shaped by our vision, by our creativity, by our insight. It's the opening of the mind energy and really um, flowing with that, excuse me, with that, with that, with that insightful sort of uh, path and vision. Okay, you then have the Ace of Wands at the base, at the base. Wow, Sag. You are lighting the fire. You are lighting the fire beneath your butt. And you're getting ready to launch into the Mother of Wands. This outburst, this sudden birth, this, this, um, this is beautiful, is what this is, <laughs> okay? So, right, this Ace of Wands is right beneath the Mother of Wands. It's pointing straight up into it. So I'm sensing you have been onto something, you've been moving with something, working on something, something new, something invigorating that invigorates your soul, that speaks to your creative potential and intent, that, um, Gosh, I mean, and one that that is going to bear a lot of fruit, I'm sensing, okay? It's a very fertile project, whatever you're working on, right? In due time, when the time is right, it's going to um, hatch, right? Many eggs, many eggs, okay? This one wants to come out. Oh, yes. Fertile. The Empress. The Empress. This could be a birth for some of you guys. This could also just be, again, a project. A project that is highly fertile. Highly fertile in the sense that it is whatever you're working on is going to bring you um, many benefits in the long term. Is going to lead to uh, manifestation on many levels, it seems. The Empress is a very fertile energy. Very fertile. It's a major arcana. It speaks to our personal progression and development of our character. It's a number three. Three is very stable. Okay, so this inherently could be placing you in a position of um, uh, greater sort of stability, greater connection with your purpose and your path, right? Much, much seen as sort of motherhood. 
And that stage, right, can be seen very much as aligning with one's purpose or path in some shape or form along their journey. And um, it could mean that you are birthing something of which you're going to sort of be the mother, the theoretical mother, right, the metaphorical mother, or the actual mother. So whatever this is, this is, this is potent, fertile energy, okay? Sag, keep at it. Keep this energy going, okay? And on the right here, you have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. This is just budding, budding flowers waiting to bloom and blossom for the harvest. Okay, it's pending, it's pending. It's waiting for this Mother of Wands, the release of all this creative energy and outflow of, 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 uh, of uh, um, built up sort of efforts, okay, and energy into what is going to soon bring you tangible, it seems soon, tangible um, rewards, okay, financial, tangible rewards. Sag, this is a great reading here. Let's flip it over. Okay, theme is Four of Cups in reverse, overlaying the Mother of Cups. This is a transformation of your emotional satisfaction and your emotional contentment with what you do. There's a lot of mothering, nurturing energy here, okay? Um, a lot. Mother, Mother of Cups. Ooh, overlaying the Hierophant. Look at that. Overlaying the Mother of Swords. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so you are becoming the master of sort of your emotions. You're becoming, you're really coming into a space of a greater emotional understanding, even within yourself and of yourself. You are um, becoming more emotionally wise, right? The usage of your emotions are, are, are um, coming into their own into a way that is channeled towards your dreams, towards what you want to manifest, okay? You're channeling this emotional energy in a very effective, positive, personal way that speaks to you and your mission very personally, Sagittarius, okay? Had to call you by your full name there. <laughs> so, right? And the Four of Cups in Reverse speaks to sort of... Um, a previously stagnant, stale sort of water energy, right? One that we didn't tap into, one that we um, sort of remained in the dark about, right? Didn't know how to use our emotions, so we just sort of stowed them away, right? Or we didn't have the clarity, we didn't have the insight, we didn't have the inspiration to uh, manifest, right? With our emotions and our emotional reservoir. But now it's upturned. The situation is leaving and in its place is the mother of cups. Look at her. She is like the alchemist. She is the the magician almost, right? Telling spells, right? So um, there's a mysticism to this card. Look at it. Right? Casting spells, almost. There's a sense of alchemy to it as well. So I'm sensing that you are using your creative potential. And creative can be literally creation. Creation of beings, right? Birth. Creation of projects. Anything, right? Think creatively with that one. <laughs> and redefining the way, right? Rediscovering yourself. Okay, and your your creative potential in such a way that taps into your inner wisdom in a way that uses your mental faculties in such a way that's channeled with great maturity, great maturity, a very strong and and acute strategic mind, right? Beautiful. And beneath that, we have this Four of Pentacles. Speaking to the laying of the groundwork, perhaps in relation to this financial or career or project sort of um, aspect of what you are 
uh, working on, right? So it's, I'm sensing very strong strategic power that's, that's empowering the strategy that's laid in the foundation of this beginning of this project or whatever it is that you're working on, okay? So you're, you're using your intellectual and mental capabilities in a way that is very mature, very wise, very strategic, and, and very um, conducive to the overall fruitfulness of this project, right? It's a mother of sorts. Very nurturing energy here, okay? And death in reverse beneath that, speaking to the period of um, transformation that has now passed. You're out of the darkness. You're out of that sort of um, <laughs> the, the, the um, what is the phrase? It's, it's like the, the darkness before the light sort of thing, right? Beautiful. Beautiful, Sagittarius. Harness this energy. Harness this creative potential and power as you move through this waxing period of heightening energy of the first quarter moon, okay? So until the full moon on, the, on February 10th, we're going to have an upsurge of energy, right, that will help carry whatever sort of... Um, plans that you have in motion, your visions. It's a very creative, magnanimous energy. Okay, so um, stick to it. Stay with it, as it seems you absolutely will. You're, you're on a roll here, and um, you're very much coming into your own, it seems. So kudos to you guys, all right? I'm going to be posting a February 10th full moon reading on February 10th, most likely, so stay tuned for that. It'll kind of um, assess how how the energy has been transforming to that sort of peak. Um, so if you want to know kind of how that process is moving through as the moon cycle goes on, tune in then, all right? Also, um, if you guys uh, don't know your ascendant or your moon sign, um, rising sign, ascendant, same thing, feel free to check the link below input your birth details and information, and that will compute for you your ascendant, rising, and moon sign. The reason I say that is oftentimes actually your, your rising or your sun sign will be even more accurate than your sun sign or can just provide some further insight okay, as to the situation. I know I personally tend to resonate a lot with my sun, or my, my moon actually, even more than my sun. So, if you're interested in that, feel free to click the link below and compute those details, all right? So thank you so much again for tuning in, Sag, and I'll see you guys on February 10th. Bye. All right, Capricorn, here we go. There's a softness to your energy. There's a softness to your energy. You're very limber. You're very limber. Flexibility. Flexibility is what I'm sensing here. Um, yes. Yes. Flexible in thought, in attitude, in um, being able to see different viewpoints. That's what I'm feeling. Okay? I want to pull another one for you guys. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Empress. Beautiful. Let me take a sip here really quick. Okay. You have Capricorn, the Empress, and the Emperor showing up in your reading. This is a pair. Okay, they are complements to one to one another. This could be you and another person, right, male or female with whom you feel very connected on a deep, deep level, with whom you feel um, is sort of your match, is sort of your pair, right? Is sort of your complement, right? You are the yin, they are the yang sort of thing. And your mind, your mind is on perhaps this person, 
If it's not a person, this can be the two sides of yourself or a situation that requires you to be nurturing, to be mothering. Okay, one that will lead you into sort of a new form of existence. One filled with imagination, one filled with vision for the future, right? You have, um, starting in your, in your deep sort of past position is the nine of swords in reverse. Okay, so I sense here, you have two nines, both in reverse. It's the nine of pentacles and the nine of swords. So you could be, I'm sensing there's an oscillation between thoughts and things, thoughts that surround things, um, thoughts, analyses, thought processes, um, perspectives that regard things or what brings you a sense of stability and groundedness, the projects, um, finances, career that you contribute to on a daily basis sort of thing that you hope will bring you long-term benefits, okay? So I'm sensing that there's a lot of analysis, almost to a point of like overload analysis of this situation that you're hoping to sort of close out, to bring to a close, to bring to fruition. It seems that you personally are being represented by the emperor. This is, um, I see this card as sort of earth and fire mixed together, sort of trying to establish his or her sort of domain over something to, to, um, to really um, make firm your place in a certain situation, okay, or uh, industry perhaps even, right? Yeah, okay, okay. So it seems that you are concentrated, right? You're focused on yourself. It's interesting because the emperor is the theme but you are at the very top of your spread, right? Sort of like the pinnacle of the, the deck here for you, or the spread. And it's very much a pinnacle card in and of itself, right? There's very much a, a culminating sort of energy to the top of the tree. So it's like you are focused on yourself. You are focused on your domain. You are focused on the building of this domain, the building of, of this sort of empire that you're hoping to um, um, bring about, right? so to speak. You're focused on your finances, on your career. You need to bring something full circle and to a close, it seems. But you are at the mercy of a situation that's impending. A situation that's impending. But, you know, many signs actually are getting the Nine of Swords and the Hanged Man. I believe Scorpio got both of these cards. Both of these cards, yes. Okay, so feel free to check that, that sign out there if um, you feel it might relate in some way. Right. Nonetheless, there is an energy that's pending, that's pending, that's pending. It's almost like, it's almost like, look, on the surface, right at the top, the surface is the emperor, is this facade almost, is this image that you are hoping to build for yourself in some shape or form. Beneath that is the hanged man. It's almost like a polarity of energy. It's almost the reverse. The hanged man is hanging down. The tree is standing upright rather uh, rigidly. Okay. So it's almost like, okay, the emperor is, is like, card of confidence. The hanged man is a card of lack of a surety, questionable, being in the dark, not knowing really when, you know, the day will come, but the bat knows that the day will come. He's just at the mercy of the turn of time. Whereas the emperor is standing tall in the light. 
okay? So perhaps on the surface, you are trying to remain calm about a situation. You're trying to remain stable and grounded and, and focused on your finances or your career or whatever it is that brings you a sense of stability that contributes to this image of, of the emperor sort of archetype. And beneath that, right, underneath sort of in your psyche and your subconscious is this feeling of maybe feeling a little bit unstable about this. Maybe feeling like you um, need to wait. Feeling like you need to wait. Feeling maybe even impatient about that, right? Feeling that um, you're in the dark about something, okay? You're unsure about something. Now, you have the Justice card as well in reverse, speaking to a decision that needs to be made. Clarity, clarity is not had fully. And justice is what lies between you and the Empress. And is what lies beneath the Emperor. Is, again, this lack of clarity. This card of lack of clarity. Being in limbo, not knowing, not having the answer, right? But knowing that a decision needs to be made, that an answer will come about in due time, but it's the period of process of waiting, of, of, of uh, waiting for day to come, right? That, that keeps us somewhat unsettled, perhaps. Perhaps. So, justice, right, is a lack of clarity, a lack of meeting eye to eye with perhaps the empress or this other side of yourself, okay? Perhaps that is the key to feeling truly stable and turning this hangman right side up is having clarity with the meeting of these two parts of yourselves, right? The yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine, right, aspects of ourselves, needing to bring those two uh, sort of halves together and in harmony in such a way where they, they, um, you're regarding either side of yourself with sort of justice, so to speak, where you're balanced, balanced, perhaps, but I'm sensing this is a person. And Scorpio, curiously enough, had a similar theme, had a similar theme of strength up top in some shape or form, right? They had more pentacles up top and underneath the surface, right? In the subconscious is this feeling of lack of stability and lack of, of uh, certainty with a certain situation, okay? So, so there's a dichotomy, right? Between surface and, and, um, and underpinning the undercurrent, right, of how we present ourselves, okay? And perhaps we need to delve a little bit deeper into our subconscious, into our psyche, into maybe the reason why we feel unstable about a certain situation in order to have clarity about how to approach the situation, perhaps. Okay? Excellent. Thank you so much, Capricorn, for tuning in. I hope this reading was helpful for you guys. Um, I will be back with a full moon reading um, on February 10th. All right, that's when the full moon is. So right, at least um, where I am located, West Coast, United States of America. All right, so February 10th, tune in. Um, that will kind of assess the energies, the progression of these energies as they move up into the culminating point of the full moon, which is the highest expression of energy um, and sort of the culmination of whatever it is that is is impending right now and in movement right now, okay? So um, also, if you um, are interested in seeking out your ascendant, rising, or moon sign, ascendant and rising being the same, um, but you don't know your signs for either one, you can click the link below in the description box that I provide and put in your details, your birth information, and so on, and it'll compute for you your signs for those points and planets, all right? So tuning into those signs and planets will uh, actually sometimes give a tremendous amount of insight that we might not get with our sun sign. All right, so feel free to check that out if it is helpful for you guys. And until then, I will see you on February 10th. All right, Capricorn, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you on February 10th. Bye.